Good morning everyone. It is now uh, Sunday and I have been burning the candle at both ends so if I look a little bit sleepy that is why. Um, obviously we went for dinner on Friday night, we went to the Muddy Duck, we had lots of lovely champagne and then on Saturday we ended up going out in London for dinner and drinks with friends. Uh, went to some places that I have never been before, <laughs> it was very interesting, I also met some of you there which was very lovely. Um, and we got home at four in the morning, um, so it has been a very difficult day and my eyes are um, a little bit, they always just look a little bit, little bit glazy when um, I've had a good night out, but I'm up and preparing to sort of finish off a few things. I also want to cook this dish, I think I'm going to make that for dinner. Um, and I'm going to go and collect my pumpkins finally because I've kind of ended up coming up with this sort of unintentional harvest table where I've just popped my tomatoes on the table in a truck to ripen and then I've also got my apples on there that were given to me from a neighbour and it looks really lovely. So I'm just going to get some of my um, squashes and pumpkins and things like that and just decorate them. You know what I'm like, I like everything pretty much natural. So I'm gonna go and pick my pumpkins. This is why I generally grow them, is for um, decor mainly. And usually I'd go and get like um, big ones from the local pumpkin patch. I don't know if I'm gonna do that this year because it was a lot and I'm only doing this now for the sort of last few weeks of October and then it's just my autumn decor. So I'm not sure, but anyway, I've had the loveliest weekend, definitely burnt the candle at both ends a little bit too much. So I'm in my version of loungewear. This dress arrived yesterday. It is again another 100% cashmere uh, jumper dress. I'll show you it, but it's got kind of like pleats in it. But weirdly, I ordered a packet of hair bands and it, one of them came and it literally matches the color identically. Like how, this is such a like, outfit if you know what I mean this is so you could dress this up so well um, I'm not wearing the headband today I'm gonna stick my hair back in a bun but I love the fact that like my favorite pieces of my wardrobe essentially are my um, most comfortable it's like my loungewear has become my um, day-to-day -day wear as well and I think I've, I've done quite well to sort of like streamline my wardrobe so that I'm wearing things that are comfortable rather than looking good but being so uncomfortable I hate that um, so yeah, it's definitely a bun day today. But also I wanted to thank you guys for the conversations that we had in the comments of one of my previous videos where I talked about the fashion industry and how I'm feeling about it. I actually had another thing that I was um, thinking the other day, but I just loved that we were able to have like, just a really open conversation. And like there were like comments that disagreed with me, comments that agreed with me, different perspectives. And I think it's really important that like we're, I just think it's lovely that we're able to have those conversations, but more than anything, like if I didn't make it clear in that like section, whatever makes you feel happy dressing wise, there is no shade on my part. I'm obviously of a sort of perspective where I have changed a lot. My views have changed a lot on, on owning luxury pieces, etc., etc., and I actively don't want to buy the trending pieces anymore because I think that there's so many better options on the on the market for things that you'll just wear and wear and wear. On one of my TikTok videos recently, someone said, like, for the most part, you are wearing your Hermes bag, so that is money well spent, and it's true. Like, I wear them so much. But one of the other points that has really, really interested me, and this actually I think was one of the main points that I kind of again got me thinking differently about fashion and my approach to it etc etc is the whole situation at the moment with Uggs and how all of a sudden Uggs are like the the accessory to have now I just want to preface this that I'm not shading anyone for having Uggs or anyone for buying Uggs I own Uggs and I love them. I think what's really interested me in this particular thing is rewind nine months and Uggs were like sacrilege in the fashion industry and now it's like the must have accessory. And I think that that in itself is like, don't trust what people are telling you is the it item. Don't trust it because they'll also tell you that it's the like, it's a, a crime to wear it 
in a few months time or a few years time and it's like those are the people that we just in my personal opinion I just don't think we should be listening to whoever is like fueling this narrative I've had my Uggs for years I've bought them I mainly get them from Ugg like the Ugg store in Bista Village, to be honest. They're comfortable. So for me, Uggs are a practical purchase. They're cozy, they're warm. Like on one of those days where you're just maybe not feeling yourself, putting on a pair of Uggs is just a lovely experience. They're cozy around your feet, your little feet are happy in there, and it's just nice. We don't have to make them like a negative accessory and we don't have to make them a positive accessory. We can just enjoy the fact that they're comfortable and practical and buy them or wear them or just own them i'm sure loads of people have them from many years ago because of that because honestly i can't it does it doesn't rile me it's not i don't feel that strongly about it but it just really helps me with changing my perspective when it comes to listening to what the trends are because that is so unreliable like one minute you're telling me that like if you buy them they're sacrilege and the next minute they're the must-have accessory because some you know Hayley Bieber or someone like that has worn them and all of a sudden okay now they're okay I can't get on board with that so I have to be really like I'm just trying to be more than more than anything vigilant and, and that sounds really sinister but like just more aware of why I'm being influenced to buy things and what the messaging is around them and I'm trying to be more conscious with the things that I say on my channel um, obviously I, there will be times when I like offer different options for example I have a cashmere jumper dress from John, Johnston's of Elgin which is eight or six hundred pounds and then I have an Amazon one which is a hundred pounds I do that because I am aware that not everyone in my audience um, has the same spending power I guess or disposable income or money to spend on clothes and I'm, I really enjoy finding these alternatives so for me that's really enjoyable. I wear them myself. If I didn't wear them myself I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you about them. So there'll be times when there'll be options but I think that for the most part I'm just, the conversation that I'm trying to have is just make sure that you're buying things for the right reason and not because someone has all of a sudden said that something's okay for you to wear because I, I, honestly I think that that's the, it's so bizarre when you think about it and I feel like there has never been a greater example of this than Ugg boots because they were literally sacrilege five minutes ago and I don't want to be one of those people that is a slave to those kinds of things like who is dictating this to me? Who is dictating what is in fashion and what isn't? Which there will be things and I won't be perfect and neither will you and I'll make mistakes but for the most part I just think it's important that we're aware so yeah just carrying on from that conversation again discuss it in the comments I love to hear like different perspectives on th on these things different styles um different thought processes literally you can say whatever um I won't be offended because it's not about me we're talking about our boots at the end of the day um and so yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because it's very, very interesting to me. So anyway, I'm gonna carry on with my Sunday and um, I'll link this in the description box down below. I got it in the oatmeal shade as well because it is slightly uh, shorter. If you were wanting more of a sort of midi length cashmere jumper dress, this is slightly, slightly different, but I love it with the tan accessories and I love how it fits. And these are the sort of like pleats on it as well. Such beautiful quality. It is 100% cashmere. I believe it's 100% cashmere. It does say it on the listing, um, but if anyone is able to read this if you could just let me know i'm sure i have some wonderful I, i'm assuming that that's chinese because i believe it came from china um if you can read that and let me know where it says there the 100 percent. i'm guessing it says cashmere because it feels like cashmere it looks like cashmere um it's very much in tune with my other cashmere pieces as well the quality wise i would say is very very similar if you've bought any cashmere from john lewis karen millen etc etc it's very very similar in texture and softness but i just love this kind of mauvey it looks more vibrant on the camera it looks a lot warmer when in actual fact it's a really sort of deep dusky mauve so for the most part our pizza oven is finished and the thing that i love the most about this is how it just has this beautiful woodland backdrop it is so so gorgeous i actually like it makes me so emotional seeing this it really does um it's yeah it's just very very exciting this will all be stacked with wood in here and then obviously the pieces will be in here sink will be 
here <laughs> overlooking where this mound of soil will be but yes it's coming along and then we've got these little inset details here my kitchen garden is a hot mess at the moment i've got my holland cooper garden shoes on which i use so so much and i'm going to get plucking these so these were some courgettes that i ended up growing but um didn't do particularly well they were very hard oh my gosh look at the size of my marrows i've just kind of left them but yeah we've got some white ones in there so yeah i'm gonna do a bit of a a big harvest and um hopefully have a few pumpkins for around the house i have however used up all of my trugs so i have nothing to put them in <laughs> so i'm gonna be kind of juggling pumpkins. <laughs> This is my rather sad pumpkin patch. I definitely didn't give this enough love this year. It also didn't really get enough um, sunlight, but luckily for me, I did get two, is it crown? Yeah, I got two crown prints um, pumpkins, which are this gorgeous shade of sort of sagey green. So I've got two of those. So they'll complement the rest of my sort of gourds and uh, courgettes really, really well. Well, we've all been having naps on the sofa and I just woke up, but I am finally gonna tackle this recipe. I'm gonna get it up on my TikTok. One of the things that I said, and it was before I um, updated my TikTok app, is that I wish they had a way of saving things on TikTok so that I can go back and like find them. Well, now they do, and I like label all of the recipes that I save on TikTok. So this one is by Emily English and it's the Gnocchi Bake uh, butternut and ricotta gnocchi bake. So I'm gonna get all of my recipes and uh, recipes, I'm gonna get all of my ingredients and get cooking. I'm gonna need to get some sage from my herb ujimi flips. But for the most part, I should have everything in here. A large butternut squash. Gnocchi ricotta. So you're gonna have to turn the lights off in here. Oh, you're cooking in the dark. How am I supposed to? <laughs> so you told me to come and do the dinner whilst in the dark. <laughs> My goodness, I am exhausted. I'm still very much getting used to the fact that I can access the kitchen garden via our steps. <gasps> oh, how very exciting is that? I keep going to walk along the uh, lawn. Here we have some sage leaves. This is how I am cooking this evening because Ali has decided that he's going to change the drivers in our kitchen. I don't know whether you remember, but I was told you that our lights haven't been the same since our kitchen renovation. So we have just, we've been waiting for our electrician to come out, but we've got the bits here. So we're just going to do it anyway. And Ali's decided to do it whilst I'm cooking. So <laughs> this little sausage is getting his snoot into things. And I have my butternut squash in the oven now for 20 minutes at 200 degrees. I'll then add the sage after 20 minutes and do another five minutes. And then on to the next stage of the recipe. But whilst I wait for that to roast, I am going to go to the oak tree in our garden because I was incredibly inspired by um, the card making that we did with Arthur Parkinson and I'm not sure if I'm gonna have the capabilities to but um, I'd quite like to make some cards for us to use using the leaves from our garden whether it's like a flower leaf or some petals from the um, garden but I definitely think some sort of like we've got some really nice orangey tones and I think if I was to get some lovely card I'd be able to make some nice nice cards whether they're just thank you cards maybe not Christmas cards although I could try and make Christmas cards um, but I want to start pressing the leaves now so that they're ready. Um, I've got some really lovely old books that I can just stick the leaves in and press them rather than pressing necessarily like flowers or something like that. So yes, I'm gonna grab some bits from the oak tree, I think. Well, if it tastes as good as it looks and smells, we are onto a winner. 
my goodness me, it smells incredible. So I basically adapted it a little bit. I did more breadcrumbs for a crunchier top and just added a few other bits in, but this smells incredible. Oh my goodness. I've got a little candle lit harvest table as well. And I'm using my Neptune kind of rust colored napkins as well, just for a little warm touch because I'm feeling exceptionally autumnal this evening. How lovely is that? Ali has stocked the wood ready for this evening. We're gonna light the fire, watch a film, and snuggle with our fur children. This little smallie is always positioned with his schnoot pointing to his dad at dinner time because he knows that his daddy is the biggest soft touch when it comes to food. And he waits patiently, sometimes just a little whimper, a little to remind him that his daddy is here. <coughs> Little whimper. Where is Barkley? <laughs> Lumi's on the table, looking at her dad as well. And you can just see Barkley's schnoot. He's taking himself to bed, he saw too much. He saw too much, he's new potty. And as you will see from how brightly lit up I am, my husband has also fixed all of the lights in the kitchen so it is no longer a um, disco in here. He's also fixed the ones in the utility as well that were flickering. Um, but we have this gorgeous light, which is always my favourite spot to film in the kitchen. Whimper sausage! <laughs> so I'm very, very happy about this. Now we're going to go into the living room and relax. Well, we are shutting up shop in the living room with a little bit of wood left to burn on the fire. I also tried out this candle for the for the first time and it's a really lovely lovely cozy fragrance which is so nice and Ali has had well made the suggestion that the boys should be allowed to sleep in the living room today because it's so cozy so we're going to see how we get on <laughs> with these good boys happy sausage He's right by the fire and Barkley is in his little cuddle bed. Little cuddle bed. Good night, boys. Good night. And of course, Lumi is in bed. We randomly moved her little donut bed upstairs and it's she usually would sleep in the in the gym in this. But I don't know why we didn't bring it up sooner, because she absolutely loves it. And so we just keep it on the bed in our room and I think it feels like she's curled up with us when she's in this donut bed. I think we got this from Pets at Home years ago. But you love it, don't you, Pippi? We need to get two so there's one in the gym side. You love your donut bed. <laughs> Night, lovey. Good morning, boys. Buckley, you're on the sofa. And Porty's in the bed. Oh, you're both up here now. Good morning. You're enjoying Daddy letting you sleep in the living room. Very good boys. Good boys. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. When I tell you that this room still makes me the happiest whenever I walk into it, I really, really mean it. Even though it is a hot mess, like there are boxes and clothes and filming equipment everywhere. It's a bit of a mad week this week, I'm not gonna lie. Um, yesterday I was fine, oh, hello, good morning, and I'm very orange. Um, yesterday I was finalizing a campaign and I was filming in my dressing room so obviously I made a bit of a mess I'm in my dressing gown still because it is shoot day today um, today I'm shooting with Katie and we're actually heading back to Ashbrook location house hopefully I'll be able to show you a little bit more of the house um, whilst we're there it's obviously a bit weird for the same house to be in my next video as well but it just so happened that um, the lady who owns the house was free and it's my shoot day so we thought I'm gonna drive probably the Defender over there and just get some really beautiful shots at her place because it's such an incredible place. One thing I find and I think that's the thing with uh, building a new build of that type is um, you often don't get the rural location a lot of the time like really really rural unless you own like 
all of the farmland. And she's really, yeah, oh, just such a beautiful location. So Katie's coming, so we should have a fun day. Oh, so much progress outside. But the thing that I'm finding really funny, and I think that perhaps it's my optimism. Every time I say to you, I really think that things are gonna come together now. I'm always a bit sort of like, are they coming together? And then I'm like, I really think they're coming together now. But they really are coming together now. Um, all of our steps are almost finished. The patio is almost finished. They're starting to do the new gravel pathways. So I, I just get very excited. Last night, Ali and I walked around and we were just like, <gasps> so hopefully I'll be able to show you that as well. But what I wanted to show you was a few more things that have arrived in my wardrobe from Amazon. Now I am literally like, I've told you this before, I'm obsessed. I find the best products on there. And the thing with Amazon is that it's like a wide breadth of products that you can get, whether that's, um, you can get high end, like my Altazura leather tan belt is on there. So you can get the high end luxury pieces on there now as well. Then you can also get the mid tier and you can also get items that, the one thing I really love as well, I feel like there's a bit of a narrative online around shopping on Amazon. And I have to be honest, my experience has not been in line with that narrative. I find so many incredible small businesses, whether it's the hair bands that I purchased, whether um, it's the dresses that I purchased in summer, a lot of them are coming from small businesses that are selling via Amazon. And for me, it's been a great place for me to di like discover um, smaller businesses that are doing beautiful, beautiful things. There's a lot of handmade things on there, but for me, finding this cashmere, has blown my mind. I've got more to show you today and more pieces. Some of the items I'm actually gonna be shooting for my shoot day with uh, Katie as well. I know I showed you quickly the black watch skirt, but um, I thought I'd get some bits and pieces on and try them on for you and show you what they uh, kind of look like. So, maybe I'll do it that way then and just style them up for you quickly rather than, than speaking. Let's do it that way. I'm in a bit of a faff this morning though because I, need to plan some looks. I'm shooting my first Holland Cooper campaign today with Katie. So um, I need to get all of my looks together and all of my pieces together. And yeah, <laughs> so I'm gonna crack on. So the first outfit, what should we go with? Let's do that one, I think. Yeah, let's do that one. Right, I thought I would show you the black watch skirt properly. Um, now, I was very smug in summer because I had all of my contrast belts, like little ties and they don't necessarily work at this time of year, especially with um, this kind of stuff. It's definitely more of a lighter fabric solution. Um, what I do think is I think I need a skinnier belt because I don't want this to look like a kilt. I think um, what you want to do is take influence from those kind of areas, but not actually look like you're wearing a full Scottish kind of dress. And I worry that this particular belt makes it look like that, but let me know what you think. I'm thinking of maybe buying an Hermes CDC belt in black, but I want, I'm trying to find it second hand um, because they don't sell them anymore at the moment anyway. But I do love this look so much. And this skirt is amazing. It's just a shame that it's a little bit big on my waist, but it's so warm. Like, I don't know if you can get a full kind of idea of how soft and warm the fabric is of this. It is so cozy and yes, it has pockets. I popped it with a Ralph Lauren shirt just to sort of keep that kind of um, influence within it because there's a lot of black watch at the moment, um, especially with Ralph Lauren brands like that. And yes, yeah, so I feel like this is quite in line with that, but I love it and so affordable. Oh, such a cute look. And as always, I will link all of the items that I'm showing you in the description box down below. So personally, I think that this is gonna be my favorite because the other ones are all kind of like cozy and simplistic, but yeah, I love this. Okay, this outfit is giving me Laura Piana vibes. I've again gone for a rich kind of tone, um, but tonal accessories as well that are all the same. This is why I want this belt. It just gives everything a bit more of a modern feel. Accessories are everything. You might be able to see that there is a little bit of like a white cast from my shirt. I have this little slip skirt from Amazon as well that I can pop underneath and it, it just hides that. It's not see-through but it's because I've got quite a brilliant white shirt underneath. So this is just one of those things that is always a bit of a wardrobe, uh, what's the word, a bit of a wardrobe essential for making an outfit look 
its best, if that makes sense. And there you have it. It is gone. But this skirt, again, 100% cashmere, super soft, and the detailing of it, it has this kind of almost uh, pleated look to it that just looks so elegant, but is also so warm. I am in love with this skirt. Beautiful kind of classic oatmeal, soft, midi length, great for with boots at this time of year. You can obviously pop um, a sort of longer line coat with it as well, but those warm accessories, I'm in love. I'll link this down below. Okay, <laughs> when I tell you that I have achieved my mission of combining my two loves from each season, so shirt dresses, hello, first and foremost, and a cashmere midi dress. Oh my goodness, I actually can't believe how gorgeous this is. Obviously, you can take this tie belt out if you want and just pop your own belt with it. Um, I'm sure that would look absolutely lovely, but I just love how this looks. It is so Laura Piana vibes. It is unbelievable. That really simplistic, but beautiful quality style. I love this. Absolutely love this. I'm gonna have to order this in some other colors. You'll always know. In fact, does it come in other colors? To check. Also, I wanted to say as well is you can get Ralph Lauren shirts, ladies shirts, the classic white style with the more, it's like, um, rather than the blue pony, it's the actual like proper colored pony. I've got it as well in that brushed cotton. It's beautiful. So if you wanted to pick up a Ralph Lauren shirt as well, like the one that I was wearing before, um, I'll link it in the description box down below. But I am over the moon with this. I'm thinking this for like work, if I was to put it with, for example, my coat from my Caramillon collection, moving into winter, it's that real kind of tonal look with the rich accessories, again, which I just love. You could get um, kind of like a, a tan tartan scarf or something like that to add a little bit more intrigue, but this I love. So smart, so simplistic and comfortable, which I feel like I'm winning at life with these pieces. Mm. Next up. Okay, this is the um, kind of oatmeal version of the pink pie crust neck that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And it's kind of muddier than the last dress. So you, you might look at it and think it's the same kind of color. It's not, it's got a bit more depth to um, the cashmere. Again, it's got almost like a, a pleating effect. I did steam this, but that's making it look like I didn't, okay? <laughs> um, but this is, um, yeah, kind of like a pleat detail that goes all the way down and then a very, very gentle, subtle, almost scallop detail to the end. Again, more of like a below the knee midi. I've gone for black accessories with this one because I think it changed it up and I think that the, the depth of the, the cashmere could actually take it, but mm, you are gonna think I'm nuts. But I found loads of um, scarves and blankets on Amazon. So, this one is actually a blanket that I have from my living room that I have been eyeing up <laughs> as a scarf because of the size of it. And if you wanted to add some kind of like volume, but also a classic sort of um, tartan print to a look like this, please excuse me whilst I win at life making a blanket into a scarf because there is nothing more wonderful in my opinion than being wrapped in a blanket and calling it fashion. <laughs> you can tell I'm getting old, can't you? So, this for me is kind of the best way to add a bit of intrigue to an outfit. I like quite simple um, styles these days because I think I get the, the longevity, I have a hair on my lip, uh, um, out of them and I choose to add classic accessories that have a little bit more detail to it. So like a tartan scarf, you can go for Burberry, you can go for whatever. There's the Tartan Blanket Company on um, Amazon, which again is another small business, and they have such a wide variety of shapes, tones, colors. I'll pop some of my favorite ones that I think will add the most intrigue without being too garish to your outfits. Um, I know that Amy Bell has just done a collaboration with them as well for some scarves again after her successful one uh, that she did, I think it was a year ago or a couple of months ago. 
And anyway, this is like for this time of year where it's not actually that cold, but you might need something extra. This is such a cozy way to kind of add a little something to your outfit, to add a little bit of color that is also a blanket and feeling super cozy. Um, but obviously, if you wanted to wear this in more of a work capacity, just a simple black blazer would really kind of smarten this up as generally a winter basic. Like if you think about it, if you were to put an intermissive base layer underneath, underneath this um, over the top of your underwear, then this on, you can pop a super warm coat over the top and a scarf and everything. It's kind of like an onion. You can layer on top of this and you're never gonna get that bulky feeling underneath your, your coats, which I hate. And that is why I go for, for cashmere pieces. And I'm so happy to be able to be finding items that are more affordable in the cashmere space. Not everyone's into it. I personally am because I think that they are such an asset to your wardrobe. So that is this dress. I think this is one of my favorites. I think they're all my favorites, but you know. <laughs> And this is, you might remember this dress from my last Amazon haul. This is the cashmere sort of mid axi dress. This one is comes up a little bit shorter than the oatmeal one that I got before. It might just be this particular dress that comes up shorter. But I really liked this for a more deeper into winter style um, and color, if you wanted to wear something a bit more with a bit more depth. And this is where I just love scarves. I think that scarves instantly change a piece like this to something completely different. So I've got this Chanel scarf that I got on my last trip before lockdown. And so if I wanted to make this more of a sort of luxe um, piece, I've got the, the fabric of the cashmere, obviously, that makes it feel quite luxe. Then I've got obviously a bag and this beautiful big, I think this is silk, like whoa, it's like silk and I'm not sure actually, but it's, it was very expensive. Um, but I think that it goes super well with this outfit, but you can also add a color super easily to this. So I've got this green one, which this is from Amazon as well. This is a fully cashmere scarf and you can add that color. You can obviously either sort of drape it over your shoulder like this to add the color or belt it, which is probably my most favorite sort of way to wear a scarf just belt it in. So you can belt it in like this and this scarf is £55 on Amazon as well so a really beautiful way to add in some cashmere to your wardrobe on a slightly more affordable budget. But this is the colour that I love the most to add to charcoal and again you can find scarves in this colour on Amazon as well. Oh my goodness charcoal and merlot really are the combination of dreams. That just looks so classically beautiful. I actually can't cope. Yeah. Oh, you could even add a beautiful like Merlot lip color. <gasps> Stunning. Imagine this with some black leather gloves. Oh, this is such a vibe. I need a coat in this color, I think. <gasps> Love this. Anyway, I'll link everything down below. I need to get ready for the day now and um, pack up all of my outfits for a fun day of shooting. Apologies if you've heard the workmen outside, but they are busy bees working away at um, our garden Ujimi flips. And um, yeah, it's going to be a busy one, but an enjoyable one, I think. Yay! It started! <laughs> oh my gosh, I've literally just been holding this down for like five minutes going no, 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 no. it started okay. we are in the defender and oh my goodness look at what we're taking in the back that's like my whole wardrobe can you see look that massive this cobweb skirt oh my gosh we've got the birkins yeah and the camera bag the birkins in the boot the baby birkin is in the boot okay right yeah. so that started now i just have to orchestrate moving everyone of like oh that smell Mm. What is that? Like That's petrol. petrol. Oh. Yeah, that is petrol. <laughs> Look at these boys. <laughs> oh, oh, they're so cute. You be the cuckoo, Letty. You be the cuckoo. I get the ball. I get the ball. I get the ball. I get the ball. <laughs> She's too cute. 
So we have arrived at Ashbrook House and today we are in the cottage. So I <laughs> thank you so uh, much. <laughs> Not at all, don't worry. Oh my god, these cups oh are so cute. So cute. I love those cups. Thank you. Coffees. I feel very lucky. So yeah, we're exploring the cottage today. So I showed you the main house um, in my last vlog, but now we're setting up shop. This is like the dream. We actually have like a whole cottage to get changed in. It's so stunning. Yeah, I actually can't cope. I want to live here. I know, I know. So I'm going to give you a proper tour. I'm actually going to pop my... Um, I can pop it down here. Let it cool down a little bit because it is burning my hand. Mon dieu. So we have lots of lovely berries for today's shoot for arrangements around here. Now this is where we actually did the event. So um, this is where if, I think if you were to do any other events here, you would probably have um, this space. It's kind of like a, a space that they converted during lockdown. And again, it's just so, so magical. So these are the tables that we were working on. Then Arthur did his talk over here. Of course, another swing. I love this. Beautiful roaring uh, log burner as well. So cozy in here. And then you go through this door and it takes you into the cottage. Obviously, that's the front door of the cottage there. But there's this little side door. And when I tell you that I am obsessed, please just remember at the forefront of your mind that this house is a new build. And so is this barn. And this, if this isn't inspiration enough and, and shows you what the inspiration was behind my home and adding this kind of character, I don't know what will. Like, this really is spectacular. She's almost, she's used like an old door frame to hide the toilet. I can't cope with this. It is absolutely incredible. I love the old wood panels to the window sills, all of the old artwork. This wallpaper and this unit is, and the thing is, is it's so clever because she's used so many materials that quite clearly have been used and loved and, and what have you. And it's just making use of old things, which I just think is the most fantastic use of, of stuff that's been either thrown away or loved once before, but then ripped out and maybe renovated at a different stage. It's just fascinating. So then, we come through into the kitchen and I absolutely love this. This is like a little antique pantry unit here. We've got the kitchen island, which most of these units look to me as if they've all been sort of upcycled and um, reclaimed. Beautiful still life, of course. Gorgeous fridge, Zanussi. We have a little bedroom here. Ah, that's what that door is, it's to this bedroom. So we've got a little bedroom here. And then this is obviously the main sitting area. I am utterly obsessed with um, this unit here. How gorgeous is this? I love the chicken wire inserts. We've got another roaring fire. And we've got a rail set up ready for us to put all of the clothes on. This would be the front door of the cottage, which is just glorious. I love this unit with the books on and this stunning, stunning bathroom. Again, she just, I, I can't cope. I can't cope with how good her eye is for these things. Got another bedroom here. So it's a three bedroom cottage and I love these. I love the use of these trays. I've got very similar ones from Sarah Raven. And it's just fantastic. Look at the floor. Look at the floor. Another bedroom in there, little twin room there. So we are gonna get ourselves uh, unpacked and I don't think, I don't think that I bought enough dresses. Looking around, I was like, oh no, we're probably not gonna, no, I don't think I bought enough dresses. I'm actually annoyed at myself now. Um, but I'm gonna get myself zhuzhed and ready to go and shoot. And shoot time. Yes, we've got Katie here. <laughs> Literally very, very excited. So let's unpack. This is our setup in the hallway. Lots of outfits. I have already forgotten something though. I've forgotten my belt, which is so annoying. All of my accessories are here and uh, handbags over here. I think we're gonna start with an Erdem dress that I actually haven't shot yet, but it is one of my favorites. Um, so I think we're gonna shoot this in the pantry, uh, in the utility area, which just shows you how many locations there are to shoot here. This is honestly like, this is how I love creating content. And I think this is how um, I've reignited my love of shoots in this capacity because I, 
love going to houses and showcasing these beautiful houses and creating different content and just doing something a bit different and having different locations. I have to tell you now that my favourite ever campaign would be for me to have a campaign with the National Trust where I just go around and shoot in National Trust locations. Can you imagine? I'd be, I'd literally, I'd be, I'd be in heaven. I'd be in heaven. But anyway, first outfit is going on and let's get shooting. I've broken a bloody nail and it keeps catching my hair just to give you some content. How are we feeling, Lids? Yeah, so we've just gone and shot with some beautiful horses and I've got all the way over there and my camera didn't have a, an SD card in it. So you'll have to go over to my Instagram and see the pictures there. Um, now we are moving the car for a shoot. We're shooting the first so we're going to park it up in front of the house and hopefully get some shots there. Alright, let's see how we go. This Okay, now we are about to shoot, I think, our last look of the day. I mean, I definitely have more. But okay. <laughs> we don't, we're probably not going to have any time. So we have finished up um, a very, very successful shoot day. I feel incredibly like frustrated because there's just so many locations that you can shoot in this house and not enough hours in the day. It, like every corner, every fence, every wall is just beautiful, like absolutely beautiful. So um, I'm thinking maybe I might try and come back in a few days time. So I'm faffing with my hair because I've had it in a ponytail and it's gone all a bit funny, but who am I kidding? I always faff with my hair. Um, but we're just gonna sit down, go through some selects and crack on with the day, basically. I've been craving water, like you wouldn't believe. I've not drank anything all day. But just to give you a little bit of a background, I believe you can let out the cottage so that the, the cottage that we've shown you today, I can you can let it out. You can also let the entire house, um, the main house of Ashbrook as well. And obviously you can have it as a location house or come and have events here, like I told you in my last video. But it is just spectacular. Like we're just going through selects now and just look at the views. Like those are the views over the sheeps, over the sheeps, over the sheep fields. <laughs> and it's just so lovely. So, so lovely. Well, as you can see, my eyes are particularly tired. I have been snuggling on the sofa though since I got back. My husband cooked me a lovely pa pasta dish for dinner and we have just, well, he watched a film that I really did not want to watch. Um, but it's been a long day, but a lovely day of shooting. And I just put up my first pictures on my Instagram, the ones of the horses. So if you, um, obviously I didn't get to show you in this video, so you can go and check it out on my Instagram. And everyone's been so nice. Um, but yeah, Ali said to me this evening, are you not gonna put your comfies on? And I was like, oh, I am in my comfies. Obviously one of my lovely dresses from Amazon and the boy's new bed has just arrived. Although Ali wanting to cover it up um, so that it doesn't get ruined because Barkley is a serial bed chewer. So I'll show you what it looks like. Oh my gosh. I'm actually not going to be able to show you what it looks like because Mr. Miller Gordon has tucked it in. But it's a very lovely size and I think it's perfect for uh, Dachshunds. You have to excuse all of their mucky covers, but um, it's got this open front and it's kind of a bit like a big sofa for puppy dogs. And I got it in a black watch fabric and it's lovely, but I've not actually seen it. So I'll link it in the description box down below, but there's definitely enough room for two sausage dogs in there. And um, I'm just gonna see if this is Barkley proof because Barkley has the jaws of a shark. And another exciting black watch purchase, which I will be wearing in bed tonight. It's, it's kind of like a brushed cotton. <gasps> black watch pajamas how gorgeous will these be even just for like christmas day they've got a beautiful black piping detail to them and a nice long sleeve top so lovely for for this time of year but it's a short version which i really quite like as well so black watch pajamas are definitely going on i'm going to get myself ready for bed now though and um get myself ready for tomorrow because tomorrow i am in london and should be a lovely day. And no, Lumi was not left out. We actually got Lumi her own little anxiety re reducing bed for our bed. 
and if you watched on my stories you would have seen that she thoroughly enjoys it she got in and she was purring and she was happy and we got it in this nice kind of coffee mocha color um and it's not actually as big as her other one so hopefully well it's just all new beds all round for for the pets they get absolutely spoiled of course i couldn't wait to try the pajamas on cute little shorts super soft and cozy for the evening also i just wanted to let you know that every single person that has seen me recently has asked what i'm doing with my skin and this just works literally alex did my makeup on saturday to go to london for a night out and she was like your skin is just it's just really like glowing i was like it's because i finally got into like the right routine with using skin and me and now it's just always glowing because it's the right amount of exfoliation for my skin and then today katie was like your skin looks really glowy and i was like well <laughs> it's skin and me and i have a code so i don't know if i can pop it in the description box or whether i can link the video and you can go and use my code there but seriously this has changed the game and in all honesty I kind of thought it was one of those gimmicks, but it's not. It's one of those things that works every single time. Anyway, I'm going to get my makeup off, get into bed, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.